so things went from bad to worse. So I had this teacher in like, I don't even know what grade anymore. Uh, but around her room, there was a poster, it was along the whole ceiling and it said, what's popular isn't always right. And what's right isn't always popular. See, the reality is, is that when we know what's right, when we have this conviction of how we should serve people, how we should help people, how we should treat people, sometimes that's not always popular. Sometimes that's, that's not how our culture or the world or our friends even think that that's how life should be. Because in this world, as a result of sin, there is division. And there's hatred and there's frustration and anger and there's all of these emotions that well up uh, such that life isn't always the way it should be, right? That's the reality of the world that we live in. Life isn't how God intended it to be. And so as we look at Exodus, we're jumping back into verse 15 of chapter one. We see that uh, last time we talked, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, well, he was, he was a sinner. He had this issue of sin in his heart and he was beginning to allow fear and hatred to affect the way that he was leading his people and as we really focused, affect the way that he was treating the Israelites, these foreigners who had come in, that they were taking care of, that was growing uh, among them, this population of people that he despised and that he feared. And so what happens is, is the way that that impacted his decision-making, the way that sin affected his treatment of those people, it continued to get worse. See, the people were blessed by God. The Israelites, they were being blessed by God, and so they continued to be fruitful and multiply. In other words, they had big families, and those families had bigger families. There were more and more people uh, of this nationality, and the king of Egypt didn't like that. And so what he did is he ordered the midwives. Think of like nurses or doulas or something that would help uh, with women who were giving birth. And he ordered them to kill every male Hebrew. Right? In other words, real evil started to impact the lives of the Israelites through the Pharaoh's commands. Not just servitude, not just mistreatment, not just suffering and pain, but even death. But the midwives disobeyed. The midwives knew that this was evil. And so instead of killing the males, they let them live. They spared their lives and they hid their lives the best they could from the king. And in order to do that, they lied about how quickly women would give birth and, and how amazing the Hebrew women were and how they're not like the Egyptian women in this way. And, and, and the king was furious. And so he doubled down on the command to make sure that these men, these boys, these babies were killed. See, he did that out of fear, out of hatred, out of being a sinner. But what I wanna focus on is the, the midwives, these women who were brave enough to do what was righteous in the face of evil. See, as Christians, we are called to live a life not by the commands and the laws and the rules of society, but by the commands and the laws and the rules that God gives us, what is truly righteous and good. And sometimes when we are called to live as doing what is good, it's not what the world wants us to do. But what the midwives show us is that there is blessing in pursuing God and his righteousness over whatever the world has uh, for us to offer. Over whatever the world is calling us to do. Over whatever the world defines as fun or interesting or good, even when it's not. The true blessing comes with us uniting with God's will and understanding his word and following him. And the reality is that Jesus coming and dying on the cross and us putting our faith in him empowers us to do that. It empowers us to live a life of righteousness because he has come and declared us righteous. His blood covered over our own sin and his spirit transforms our hearts and it empowers us to live righteously, to live according to his command, his call, his desire and plan for life, and we live into that. And we get blessing from that. We are united to God, we have this relationship growing, and we are united to other believers, we have this community growing, and as those two things are fostered, we continue to have an impact of righteousness in this world, even when others are pursuing evil, even when sin is continuing to wreak havoc, even at the cost of our own suffering, 